About 5,000 people have climbed to the highest point of our planet, but only a few brave men manage to get to the deepest one. No matter how harsh the conditions at the top of Mount Everest, nothing beats what awaits you at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Eternal darkness reigns here. Metal bends under tremendous pressure. Fountains of liquid sulfur gush from underwater geysers. We will tell you about the people who decided to go into this horror a little later. Now let's see what journey one needs to take to dive to a record depth. 40 meters, maximum diving depth for pearl collectors and amateur scuba divers. The underwater environment at depths from 0 to 200 meters provides habitat for 90% of all life in the ocean. At this depth, light still penetrates the water column, creating conditions for the growth of phytoplankton. The vast biomass feeds a considerable variety of small crustaceans, and these are food for fish. 332 meters, scuba diving record. The twilight zone begins at a depth of 200 to 1000 meters. Less than 1% of sunlight penetrates beyond this depth, but many inhabitants of the deep sea are able to exude light themselves. They use bioluminescent chemical reactions to attract prey or scare away predators. 565 meters, emperor penguins maximum diving depth. Due to the lack of photosynthesis, nothing grows at this depth. But there are still fish here. Many of them swim to depths to hide from predators. 1,000 meters, where the sun's rays no longer reach. 1,027 meters, record for deepest dive of a military submarine. Siphonophores, the closest relatives of jellyfish, live at a depth of up to a thousand meters. They live in colonies, clinging around a long tube, which serves as a single digestive system for them. When an unwary fish, attracted by a bright light, swims close, the siphonophore releases poisonous needles, and the victim becomes dinner for the entire colony. At a depth of over a kilometer, the midnight zone begins, a place where complete darkness reigns. There is little food available, deep sea animals are forced to save energy. Most living creatures do not hunt in this area, but drift lazily, collecting sea snow, microparticles from the remains of a dead fish, plants, feces, dust and sand. 2,200 meters. Giant octopuses live here. They often engage in titanic battles with sperm whales swimming at such depths. 4,500 meters. The depth at which you can meet anglerfish. Anglerfish has evolved a specialized glowing lure due to the lack of light that can reach that depth. This fishing rod contains millions of light-producing bacteria collected from the environment. Anglerfish hunt by attracting prey with this light. For its victims, the luminous bait resembles a juicy fat worm. 6,100 meters. At this depth, internet cables are laid along the ocean bottom. More than 99% of the ocean is less than 6,000 meters deep. To get deeper, you need to look for cracks in tectonic plates. Colliding, they form submarine volcanoes, plateaus, and depressions. This is how the Mariana Trench was formed. It runs south of Japan and stretches for 2,550 kilometers in length and 69 kilometers in width, resembling a crescent in shape. This place is one of the most unexplored on our planet. We know immeasurably more about the surface of Mars than we do about the Mariana Trench. The pressure at this depth can turn any living organism from the surface into a bloody fog in a microsecond. For an unprotected person, it is like being under a stone block weighing 500 tons. The bottom of the Mariana Trench is dotted with geysers that pour out liquid sulfur and carbon dioxide. For organisms from the surface, these chemical compounds are lethal, but scientists have found that these emissions are a suitable energy source for microorganisms living at these depths. 
The fact that the Mariana Trench is the deepest point in the ocean became known in 1875 during the British vessel HMS Challenger expedition. Back then, technologies did not allow to measure the depth fully, but the team managed to establish the maximum figure 8,184 metres below sea level. More accurate data was obtained in 1951. The crew of another British survey ship, Challenger 2, using sonar, discovered a crevice extending to a depth of 10,994 metres at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. The place was evocatively named Challenger Deep in honour of the two expeditions. The deepest dwelling fish that lives in the Mariana Trench was discovered recently. In 2014, a team of scientists from the Hadal Ecosystem Studies Program – the Hadal zone is any place between 6 to 11 kilometers below the ocean's surface – discovered a new variety of snailfish that can live at depths of over 8,000 meters. The semi-translucent white fish has broad wing-like fins and an eel-like tail. A unique cell structure helps this species to survive under enormous pressure at the deepest spot on Earth. The extreme cold and high pressures of the ocean trenches would make the fat in your cell membrane solid, just like butter in a refrigerator, says Jeffrey Drazen of the University of Hawaii at Manoa in Honolulu, who led the expedition to the Mariana Trench in 2014. So deep sea animals must adapt their membranes to keep them liquid. They do this by having lots of unsaturated fats. These remain liquid at low temperatures and keep the membranes loose. Apart from the Mariana snailfish, there are no other predators at this depth, so it can enjoy the lack of competition. Sea cucumbers, albino, and foraminifera, giant single-celled organisms a bit like oversized amoeba, are the most common life forms at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Occasionally a dead whale sinks to the bottom. For the inhabitants of the depths, that means a feast which can last for months. The Mariana Trench is also of interest to geologists. At its bottom, scientists discovered a lake of liquid sulphur. Such sulphur lakes are also found on Jupiter's satellite Io. The first people who visited the bottom of the Earth Mariana Trench were the Swiss oceanographer Jacques Picard and the US Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh. Their goal was to test a new underwater vehicle in extreme conditions. On January 23, 1960, they were aboard the deep sea vehicle Trieste, which made a record-setting dive to the ocean's deepest known part. The descent took almost five hours. The bathyscaphe carried no scientific equipment and no experiments were conducted. The mission's purpose was to prove that the depth could be reached. They were unable to collect specimens or take photographs. Trieste kicked up so much sediment of the seafloor that all they could see out of the window was a murky fog. But Picard and Walsh made an important discovery. They found life 11 kilometers below sea level. Jacques Picard claimed to have seen a flatfish at the seabed. Marine biologists later disputed his observations, claiming that no fish could survive the pressure at such depths. Modern scientists believe that it was a sea cucumber. Another discovery was no less important. Picard was able to refute the misconception widespread at that time that there was no upward movement of water at great depths. Because of this, the nuclear powers even viewed the Mariana Trench as an ideal dump for radioactive waste. Fortunately, thanks to Picard's discovery, radioactive contamination of the Pacific Ocean was avoided. Although the descent took almost five hours, Picard and Walsh spent only 20 minutes at the bottom. As they passed through the Hadal zone at a depth of about 9,000 meters shrouded in darkness, Picard and Walsh heard a loud bang. An outer window had cracked. The risk at that depth was immense, as the water pressure is equivalent to 1,000 atmospheres. However, they managed to complete the descent. The Trieste team expected to return to the Challenger Deep with their vehicle, but the Navy, citing safety concerns, decided to limit the craft to depths above 6,000 meters. 
It took half a century to repeat the journey. In March 2012, Canadian film director James Cameron made a solo descent in the deep submergence vehicle Deep Sea Challenger. Cameron, well known for his films Titanic and Avatar, was not new to deep sea diving. He descended to the depths during the filming of The Abyss, participated in expeditions to the sunken Titanic and the battleship Bismarck's remains. Almost everything has been explored on land, he explained his decision. In space, the chiefs prefer to send people to circle around the Earth and send machines to other planets. For the joys of discovering the unknown, one field of activity remains the ocean. Only about 3% of its water volume has been investigated, and what is next there is unknown. In the 2000s, there was no single underwater vehicle in the world capable of withstanding pressure at a depth of 11 kilometers. Therefore, Cameron and his team had to design it themselves. The Deep Sea Challenger took over seven years to build. This miniature bathyscaphe that fits just one person is one of the most complex underwater vehicles in history. The submersible contained over 180 onboard systems, including batteries, thrusters, life support, 3D cameras and LED lighting. During dives, the control system recorded depth, heading, temperature pressure, battery status and other data and sent it to the support ship at three-minute intervals via an underwater acoustic communication system. The Deep Sea Challenger resembled a rocket, a narrow, vertically oriented tube, an ideal shape for a quick descent. The submersible featured a pilot sphere with thick steel walls from where Cameron operated the bathyscaphe. Don Walsh, the only living person to have been at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, was a key advisor on Cameron's team. Do you have any tips? If at 20,000 feet I hear a crack, Cameron asked him. If you hear it and you're still alive, you might keep on with a dive. You never hear the one that gets you, Walsh reassured. James Cameron's journey to the Challenger Deep took place on March 26, 2012. The director managed to shoot a large amount of material, which later formed the basis of the documentary Deep Sea Challenge 3D. Not everything went as planned. Cameron had planned to spend about six hours near the ocean floor exploring, but decided to start the ascent to the surface after only two hours and 34 minutes because of a hydraulic leak. The interior of the pilot sphere was so small that the pilot had to keep his knees bent and could barely move for hours. I felt isolated from all humanity, Cameron recalled. I felt I had gone to another planet and come back all in one day. It's a vast frontier down there, said Cameron. The Hollywood director failed to find signs of life at the bottom. At the point where the bathyscaphe landed, the bottom looked flat and deserted. But in the soil samples that James Cameron took from the bottom of the Mariana Trench, many previously unknown microorganisms were found. For seven years after Cameron's journey, the Challenger Deep was not disturbed. Expeditions resumed only in 2019, when 13 more people visited the bottom of the Mariana Trench. All of them made their descent in the limiting factor underwater vehicle. American businessman and explorer Victor Vescovo designed the submersible specifically for the descent to extreme depths. Victor and his submarine hold several records. He became the first person to descend to the bottom of the Mariana Trench more than once, and the first to visit the deepest points of all four oceans. Victor also broke the record for the deepest dive ever. The last ones to descend into the Challenger Deep were Chinese scientists aboard the deep-sea submersible Fenduzi, which means striver in Chinese. On November the 10th, 2020, they broadcast live on CCTV Beijing from the very bottom of the ocean so the viewers could also feel like underwater explorers. Although the Mariana Trench remains one of the most poorly studied places on the planet, there has been noticeable research progress in recent years. Each expedition deep into the abyss gives new answers and introduces previously unknown inhabitants of the depths. Unfortunately, the most isolated place on the planet could not escape the influence of human civilization. Underwater researchers have encountered plastic bags and candy wrappers at the bottom of the trench. Traces of contamination are also present in 
microorganisms. Understanding how these organisms have learned to survive in extreme conditions can be applied in biomedicine and other fields. It is believed that deep sea geysers could have been the birthplace of the first living creatures on the planet. Therefore, bacteria at the bottom of the Mariana Trench may shed light on one of the most important questions. How did life in the universe originate? And that's all. Tell us what you think about deep sea exploration in the comments section. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe for our channel, and see you soon.